monster. And also, if you get one Windermine shot off, all it Ooh. takes is one Viking to shoot, but Hero did spot that. And oh, oh, it did spot that one, though. And oh, if that Viking was out just a little smidge sooner, maybe that could have been a dead Phoenix. But Maru already, he's not going to be unhappy with that because that is a decent thing to happen for you. Takes his natural expansion as he's doing, so he's got a second barracks on the way up. And it doesn't look as though he's been too bothered about continuing to produce units. He's just going to get add-ons up and running here and put himself in a position where he's probably going to be able to start stem fairly early on. He has a lot of gas, potentially build a Raven off the starport. Now it has a tech lab as well. There it is. Raven to me is always terrifying when you build it against Phoenix because even if you protect it well, sometimes they can find a kill on it. So a little scary, but still full of utility if you can manage oh. to keep it alive. But the Adepts are in the main base. They will not shade though. Don't be Phoenix moving up the right side, looking for something. We're going to go straight into that Robo Bay. I mean, as we're making this many Phoenix, we had no sign of going charge or anything, right? It kind of had to just be Colossi. Otherwise, what are you actually going to have to fight? I'm very afraid that Maru's timing here is going to be way before the first Colossus. Usually, you have a Colossus out roughly when, like, a bio attack hits. We're nowhere near that right now, as we are going to go dive for the Raven. Maru whoa, recognizes, whoa, 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 whoa. though, he's going to get masses of damage done. And... That was a missed call from Hero. He had to dive way too hard, and he didn't even get the Raven. Did I just see two Robos being made by Hero? I think I did for a second there. I, I, he might have double two. Okay, okay, okay. He had one Robo Bay making, then another one done, which he actually canceled, I do believe, but very unusual. But that is the first time I've ever seen a Raven stay alive yeah. against a seven Phoenix dive, by yeah. the way. I actually don't know how he did that. I, I think it was the immediate reaction from Mario. He saw instantly what was happening. He knew he was going to go for it. Double order turret puts so much more damage out. If you hesitate a second, the Phoenix are through, killed it, and gone, right? But he put it down before Hero, I think, had even committed. Holy so crap. Great decision is now he's going to go for it. But double cannon at the front, going to make it tough to bust. Widow Mine will help out. There's a lot of mines here, which is going to make it tough for you to move in. But there's not like there's a lot of Zealots. If this was a Zealot based army right now, I think Hero would probably die. But the fact he is going to Colossus, he might just about be okay. You know what? I like this from Hero, how he's done it. Like, there were so many cannons there in the front, which you might be like, whoa, that's kind of weird, right? But there was no third, there's no third base for yeah. him to really attack. So he's totally stabilized here. He's doing fine. He's got that Phoenix Colossus production going. And that is a, still a scary amount of Phoenix, considering he lost a few earlier. Like, this is a very old school style, but he's already playing the map in a very cool way, actually. Hero, as soon as he takes that next base, by the way, two more cannons, battery going down. He just says, I'm playing a style where if you can't kill me and break into me, my army just becomes so powerful. So he is just taking every precaution to make sure he gets there. And that's also because he's going double forge. It's extra money invested that isn't paying off right now. So get the stack defense to get you through this phase of the game. Force Maru to macro up. And okay, Maru's terrifying in late game as well. But you're going to be there on your own terms and in a great position because you're going to have a lot of splash damage available. You're now going to have all your upgrades. I mean, you're going to be in the late game on the best possible playing field. It's always a fickle beast, though, because, like, Maru, he can't really go into Vikings. Well, he is going into Vikings, but he can't just kind of whimsically kill those Colossus now. He has to be very careful about this number. So I like the fact that he's gone into these Ghosts first, because that ground army is obviously going to be lacking a bit compared to a normal game. I wouldn't be surprised as soon as he gets a few Ghosts out. He kind of goes across the field, tests the waters a little bit, but these Phoenix getting a little bit of damage done, and most importantly, getting to see what he's up against as well. Yeah, being able to scout in, just see the exact timing of things, seeing, oh, that's a second starboard, cool. I know where you're adding that kind of process of adding on extra Viking production, potentially liberated production. Those are just things which are nice to keep on top of. I believe his little Widow Mine Force was a drop earlier that he set up as a trap, but then it never worked out. So they're just going to make their way back home, as you do here on Moon Dance. And what's interesting is now we're taking fourth bases. This is where the map becomes smaller, right? And it's already a small map, so... We're going to start seeing, you know, you're going to have to be like really on top of if one guy is moving forward, the other player has to know, be in position immediately. Otherwise, it's going to take one second to be broken down out of position. I'm not super scared of this hero or army of hero yet. I mean, I know it's a lot of Colossus, and in fact, that is a scary number of AOE units, but trying to go into Maru here, especially with the EMPs, that's tough, man. I know he's trying to hit this plus two timing that he's got going, and it is scary if he gets on top of these units with the phoenix and then blows himself up kind of thing but he has to be so careful here yeah we're gonna see the disruptor shot will just finish off the turret anti-armor missile will dissuade hero for going in for a few more moments and that's nice gonna buy you some time and maybe the vikings get the prism knocked oh. down nicely grabbed and that's just gonna be annoying there for hero having to replace a prism losing a couple of units inside of it as well and now you just can't reinforce his position and Mario he's just buying time for his own two two more vikings get very safe right this was a timing from Hero, but Maru has completely diffused the situation. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, the upgrades are the big thing this game. These Widowmines have been really cute for just scouting around, just getting to find out where a run by is happening. And even this look flies the Oracle right on into it. I mean, it did open up this <laughs> his path for this massive run by of Zealots, but Maru, pretty quick to react. He will be losing a few SVs, but at this point, it's less it's less of a, you know, a, a real thorn in Maru's side. At this point, he's kind of okay with losing a few SCVs almost. And to be fair, I mean, the amount of Zealots he killed was absolutely fine to lose four SCVs for. It's very rare the Zealot run by is inefficient, but that was one of those timings, so great shutdown from Maru. He's denying these few Stalkers as well, which I feel like he was probably not as bothered about right now. It's difficult to make these Stalkers work in the later stage of the game. Another Widow Mind just on the map gets a connection. We are going to maybe see a fight here. The Goat's on their own in the front, but... Oh, yeah, there's just nothing else here from Hero. The Zelda's just run into nothing. I mean, Hero's trying to get done what he can, but Maru's growing like a Zerg here. Like, that was his sixth base, and all those Phoenix just died. And, I mean, they weren't really, uh, you know, an addition to his army at this point. They maybe take a few shots from these Vikings, keeping the other air units alive for longer, along with the Colossus. But, yeah, so many Tempests coming out. This is super weird by him. He's almost going for this kind of game where he wants to play uh, a little bit of peck damage almost, but I don't see how it's going to work against Maru. I just, it just feels as though he's expecting a transition and Maru made like two libs and then maybe saw Tempest and was like, oh, then I just won't. You know, you go ahead and build your Tempest. I won't build any Liberates. And then what do the Tempest achieve at this point? I just, I just really don't see it. Like, yeah, you could chip away, but Maru is probably going to be able to position himself nicely enough to work against that. He's going to move in on the right side now. Hero does not know. Missing that map control over there. And again, it's a short map, so Mario strikes. And he's going to probably get rid of this base. Oh, I love just that EMP on down. the Nexus. Some he, recall. Yeah, yeah. EMP on the Nexus gets rid of the energy. No recall available. And he keeps the map very even. And if we oh, we're going into nukes as well here. What is the resources lost time at this point? Because I feel that Mario's just been... Holy crap. Three <laughs> times better almost at this yeah. point. And if this does turn into a split map situation, that absolutely matters. That is kind of crazy, right? I mean, it, it's funny because 6,000 resources can go in a blink of an eye in these late game fights, but to make up 6,000 resources, very difficult to do. And Maru just going to attack on in here, trade out for a bunch of structures. Now the army's going to start moving back. Maru's going to try and escape down the side. He kind of gets cut off though, and he's already used the boost on the medevac, so it would be difficult to lift up and justify trying to escape away. He's just going to keep on running, trading out what he can, because he's also attacking the bottom left. His next move is already in the making. I mean, that nuke was rather ambitious, Wardy. You know, he's got an army yeah. coming on top of him. He's like, I'm going to nuke you, hoping for a no observer. But uh, Maru, he's doing very well with his two armies here. He's just dealing quite a lot of damage. Granted, it's mainly infrastructure that he's killing. But this, this is starting to feel like a very, very tiny map for Hero. And upgrade-wise, he's doing really well, by the way. Like, 3-3 three, three done on his ground units for both of them, actually. Those air upgrades coming alive as well. And Maru, he has to respect this army, man. Because, yeah, one wrong move. And it could go really wrong against Disruptors. Yeah, no, I mean, it's always the danger of TVP. Armies are explosive, and armies can die very quickly if you messed up. But Maru isn't in that business usually. However, this army on the right maybe gets caught a little bit. It does look like he gets it back up the ramp to defend. Tempest are now starting to chip, but yeah, the Vikings make a move forward. I guess the Storm is something I didn't really consider. We've not seen much of it, right? But it does help zone those Vikings out. That will protect the Tempest and give them time to do damage. The Disruptors have just move commanded forward. Two of the three go down. The third one was dodged. Maru is eating Storms, but he's not losing anything. Things are just damaged, which get healed back up now. Yeah, I mean, that resource tap does not lie whatsoever. Here is definitely losing more resources, but I feel he's out of juice with this army now. Like. Maru, if, if he has to make a unit, it's just tons of Vikings, tons of ghosts at this point. I really feel that would keep him alive. And he's making a lot of medevacs. I guess that's because of all the damage that he's taken here. Maybe he feels all his medevacs are kind of low, but Hero, he's making this army that you kind of don't think that much of look very good in this little position here. Because what, like, how do you flank this? You have to go from a completely different angle. Yeah. It's funny, right? Because the base that appears all in the high ground, which you think, oh, that's nice and defendable. But Hero's almost like, well, yeah, but how then are you ever going to attack my army? So I'll just poke around, do what I can. And that's where the Tempest actually do kind of excel. There's not really been an answer to them just yet. So, yeah, credit to Hero playing a little bit of the map. And I wasn't as convinced by the Tempest initially, but they are doing some work right now. Oh, they certainly are. I mean, like, you can't get on top of them. And these ghosts, they are super expensive. Like, you're talking 150 minerals, 125 gas a pop. They take a long time to rebuild and to get oh. going. And this now, the resource lost up. In fact, it's a huge surround coming in from Maru, literally every angle, and Hero caught totally 
totally off guard here. Mara coming in from the north, the east, the west, the south. Everything going down for both players. Carnage again, EMPs galore. More Zelots coming in. I don't know who's winning this fight, but what a beautiful engagement from Maru. He almost let Hero just walk up that ramp and say, you know, come on, come on, you push me back. And now I've got the Saran I've been looking for. He gets the Disruptor on the dive, and these few Tempers shouldn't be able to stand up for themselves. Hero will attempt to recall, but he loses one in the process, at least because it just doesn't get caught in the recall. Maru's supply at one point there was low compared to Heroes, but he made up so much of it in the tail end of that fight. He comes out ahead, gonna catch this Prism stop. I mean, I guess reinforces were really gonna happen, but it's one more thing to rebuild when you're currently focusing on rebuilding a Disruptor count. I mean, like, we look at this little uh, this little force of Hero. Looks kind of uh, measly at the moment, but three carriers on the way. And these are carriers with sick upgrades, Wardy. Like, they aren't going to die quickly, which is a big deal, but they're also going to dish out a lot of damage. And Maru, even though he took a big win in there, trying to slow down here at this point, it's going to be difficult and lovely snipe in this yeah. Disruptor. Yeah, gets a second one as well before it can really do much of anything. He's just going to let the one on the left side fire. No, just not good enough. He's going to keep on dropping the EMPs. Units are warping in onto this position, though, but he's already EMP'd those Zealots. The Interceptors are already dead, so the carriers feel like dead. Wait, and Hero looks as though he's got to type out GG as Maru. So far, you can say that's worked out pretty well for Hero. A little bit different to game one, but he's going for that Stargate opening in yet again. Oh, absolutely. You know, if you just hit this Phoenix back, it's like, but well, what are you really gaining here? And he actually just goes one Phoenix into Twilight, so that's a bit of a switch up in itself. Usually this would be an Oracle into Twilight, because at least the Oracle can revelate a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. It can maybe harass a bit. Will it eat a mind shot on the Phoenix? No, <sighs> just out of range, so. He's going to get into the main base. Just a quick peek. Sees, okay, extra barracks already going down. That's already good information. And now he does fly over that mine. So he didn't actually notice it the first time when it locked on for a split second. A little, uh, a little unfortunate. Two extra gates with his Twilight Council, Ben. Mm, this is already a big mix-up from him. Like, if he is going into Blink here, and he wanted to use that Phoenix for vision to keep it alive, to, you know, get vision into the high ground, into the main or something, then that's a big deal. But we do see that third base now dropping for Hero. His minerals were stacking up a little bit, but so far, can't get any damage done with this. And the Raven opening, the three extra barracks behind it. Uh, this is, Maru's obviously found a way of playing that he can find out what's happening, kind of deceive his opponent a little bit, and just feel very comfortable with it. Oh, no. 2 HP on the Hellion, it's not going to do too much, right? But it's just scary. If he'd ran for the main base, maybe he gets a little scout off. As you see the Phoenix going down, so if that was going to be... Oh, and Hero, look at that reaction there as well. He immediately just opened his mouth. It's like, what? No. And that's huge because maybe that was going to be his way to blink up. I mean, he's proxying up a gateway right now. So he's just lost high ground vision. He's got no robo facility. He's probably going to have to build another Stargate unit or maybe use the Adept Shades. It takes away a lot of his potential, though. Absolutely does. Like... Even if we ignore the fact that he could blink into the main, that Phoenix was his only real scout. Like, he's got these Adepts that fly in here. I don't know if he's noticed the Raven. He must have done from seeing that uh, Phoenix get so close. But yeah, a lot of potential gone there. And Maru, he's going to be feeling comfortable about this. All he has to do now is defend the front. At least he thinks that. Maybe he assumes that Hero could be going one step extra, but we know a little bit different. The fact that he's going for a forge behind this as well, though, this just makes me think it's a little bit of friendly aggression, you know, a little bit of a poke here. He still yeah. wants the game to go on afterwards. The problem is, though, if you don't do much here, it just feels as though their Maru has Stim, combat plus one, and you're stuck on a lot more Blink Stalkers than you maybe like to be. Your tech's a lot slower, at least, so it's going to be a long time before you get an answer to the bigger bio armies. I think that's going to be maybe very scary as we do just drop down charge, of course. I mean, three gas at the moment. Looks as though we are going to play pretty heavy aggression with the gateway account. But again, with the way he's opened, it could have just been better from Hero. And that's the issue because now Maru is maybe going to be in a better, stronger spot. And maybe that Zealot Stalker never hits its critical mass as he's going to catch at least one of these Adepts using the Viking for high ground just in case they slipped up the ramp. I, like Maru, the fact that he got out of there when he did, that's actually kept him alive. Yeah. I mean, he still might be in a lot of trouble here against that amount of Stalkers. Blink has obviously been used and the turret is dropped here, but that is a scary number. Oh. Even getting Adepts into the main, this is the hero we want to see, just being all out aggressive in your face while being super greedy behind it. This is nice. It did feel as though Hero needed a little bit of something. Mine's going to come to stop an aggressive blink forward. Stim and combat shield's done now. So these bio units, as good as they're going to be for a while, other than that plus one finishing, some extra adepts coming through. I mean, adepts can be a little bit tanky. They can be useful in that scenario, but they're not the best, right? They're not like the zealots. Now, seven SCVs went down at least. Mario is now 18 workers down in this game. Hero, 
do much better this time around. He certainly is, and four extra gateways going down. I think he was already on four or so. Going for the armor as well, that makes me think he's going for a very, very, very zealot heavy play. How many gases does he have rolling? Just three at the moment yeah. as well. I mean, he's looking very good this game. I mean, I'm still scared about a move out from Maru, because that Raven against just a gateway army, the anti-armor missile can work absolute wonders. So he is trying to tech out, getting the robo going and stuff, but yeah, I, Hero still has to be careful. I like that he's using the Sorkers to bait out the Widowmines, though, because mm -hmm. then the yeah. Zealots can run in. The thing is, Maru's being very careful about holding on that high ground. He's trying... I'm, I'm a little surprised that he's not, like, unburring the Widowmines when he can and stuff, because he is baiting them, but yeah. Hero's obviously teching up. Fourth base on the way. He's getting immortal, stocking up his army, getting the Dark Shrine as well. This is, and, and Maru hasn't been able to move out of his natural. No, I was going to say, like, for now, it's okay that Maru's on two bases because he's getting the third at least. And yes, Hero's out mining him, but Maru's army should be much more efficient. Maru needs to do something a little bit extra soon, though. I feel like if he can get across the map right now and maybe take down a fourth, but oh, what a timing on the Prisma show up. Maru doesn't see it until Zelt's going to be charging on his production. He gets rid of one threat, but he will just have to deal with another. All the Widowmines starting to go off here, though. Hero oh. maybe not deal with this as well as he could be, and he takes some pretty huge hits. Mario will deal with this, but he has to go back into his main as well. Eight SCVs have already gone down. And this is just damage and a slowdown that Mario was not really willing to take. The thing is, the supplies are a little deceiving, right? Like, we've got 70 workers for Hero, 41 for Mario, but Mario's actually, like, pretty equal in supply. So as soon as Mario can leave his base, it's going to be this... It's all on this warp prison for Hero. He has to keep Mario away from him because he's so greedy behind this. And with the DTs in the mix as well, uh, Hero's definitely got the tools, it's just whether Maru can really hold on. He's going to knock down a pylon off to the side, Raven in at the top. Just being kept over there, just maybe watch for a Prism coming in, dropping Matrix on the warp in. We do have our Bioforce though, pressing forward. Maru definitely has a timing here. Look at the army difference, 30 army supply oh, in his favor. Boys. But he's going to have warp ins coming through. Here come the SEVs to tank a little bit. There's just no splash damage. Here comes the Prism auto turrets coming down. He feel, realizes this is one of the big fights he has. And he's now 50 army supply ahead, by the way, with some SCVs remaining to tank. SCV, uh, sorry, sentries out of energy as they chase down by SCVs. And oh, my goodness, this army of Maru. Might not actually be stoppable. Hero needs sentries. He needs force fields. He doesn't have it. We depower the forge from hitting plus one attack. And I mean, even DTs right now not getting the job done. Maru does have a third CC to get scans with. Oh, I mean, Hero knows it. Look at him smiling away. He's like, ah, you got me. You knew what, you knew what I needed to do which was keep you back. And you doubled down. You brought your SCVs. You came at me with everything that you had. And Ah, brilliant game from Maru. He's juggling as much as he can with his warp prism. He's killed the Raven, I believe, in that mix. I can't even see. Oh, no, no, no it's still alive. So he didn't even need scans, right? <laughs> yeah, can't do anything. Maru's yeah. even micro his reinforcements <laughs> on the way. Hero's trying to do what he can, but uh, I think the writing's on the wall in this one. The writing is on the wall because at this point, Maru can just rally his reinforcements into the main and he can just deal with this attack, right? And he's got all of these units which are looking good. He's got rid of the Dark Shrine. That's not really an issue anymore. And he's obviously depowering all the gates. If he hits this right side, he can get rid of the last few gateways here. And then Hero can't build anything extra. And that just means he's stuck on what he's got, which is not going to be enough. I, I don't think there's any form of base trade, which really makes this worth for Hero. He'll warp in what he can going into the main. He wipes out a little bit in the natural, but Mario just lifts up instantly. He's like, base trade all you want, buddy. I am absolutely in the winning position going into this. I mean, uh, a wise man once said, never base trade a Terran, but especially not when you're 40 supply behind. But the thing is, <laughs> he can't go up against that army, right? Like, yeah. So I think this is absolutely the move if Hero wants to try and win this, but it's still going to be ridiculously difficult because Mario is just going around, bopping those bases. He's basically playing that RK game, right? Where he was bapping the weasel. And, <laughs> and right now, Hero, he's doing what he can, man. But how do you take out these flying buildings? I don't think you can. No, he's got like four stalkers and an Archon, so... It's like, congratulations, you kill one of the three orbitals and everything else gets away. So Matt is going to be able to rebuild economy somewhere if he wants to. He already has 17 SCVs, which he's apparently saved as well, because I guess somewhere with the push, of course, also. So yeah, he's looking fantastic right now, and Mario just move around. He maybe doesn't know that top left Nexus is there right now, but he can protect his orbitals, and he once he's blink, done that... He oh no, and the Matrix hits the uh, interview, uh, Matrix on the Prism as well. He's going to just stop that from doing much. Yeah, man, I mean, this is rough. I mean, Hero just can't stop Mario getting reset. No, and I mean, he oh, recalled. No. Where to? Top left, I yeah, guess? Yeah, top left. And I mean, like, as soon as Maru, he's starting to move over in that direction, but every unit lost here, Hero cannot remake. And Hero, hand off the keyboard there, kind of scratching his face a little bit. He still wants it. I mean, here, this is the difference between finishing, like, potentially second or third in this group to first. Mario's going to have such a nice... Well, he's looking really good. I mean... 
no way around this, right? He is absolutely dead. <laughs> GG Maru. Uh, 